Hey everyone, my name is Lung and I'm the Chief Technology Officer at REM Project. And today it's my absolute privilege to be speaking at Money Dance about REM Project uh, and how it's going to benefit the Avalanche ecosystem and how the Avalanche ecosystem will be able to use it to access other blockchains and other assets. Uh, I've personally been following Avalanche for some time now. Uh, I've been interested in it ever since I read the paper published by Team Rocket, which introduced the Snow class of consensus algorithms. And one of the reasons why this was of particular interest to me and is of particular interest to the REN project is because it is a truly novel consensus algorithm that works in a fundamentally different way from other consensus algorithms. And we'll talk a little bit later about why that's important when it comes to interoperability. But for now, I would like to introduce the REN project, uh, what we do, what we've been up to, and some of the interesting statistics that have come about over the last year. REN project was founded three years ago by myself and my co-founder, Tian Jane when we were exploring the space of dark pools. A dark pool is a, a form of exchange where the user's uh, anonymity and privacy are preserved uh, while they're exchanging assets. And while we were exploring this space, we realized that was a more fundamental need for interoperability. Uh, we looked at sort of the, the blockchain spaces that were around at that time, uh, some of the technologies that were being developed, the assets that were being built and the liquidity that was being built up in different uh, sections of the space. But none of these uh, things were able to interact with each other without going through centralized intermediaries. And having to use these trusted third parties as a way to integrate these different ecosystems and technologies felt like it went against the fundamental principles of trustlessness, permissionlessness, and decentralization. And so with that in mind, we built RenVM in an attempt to solve this problem. And for the last three years, REN Project has been developing and maintaining RenVM, which is a NPC-based interoperability solution that offers what we call universal interoperability. Today, and even back then, there were already many forms of interoperability. Uh, as an example, we have price oracles, which may not initially seem like a form of interoperability, but at the end of the day, what they're doing is giving you access to data that exists in other chains, other assets, or even other ecosystems entirely, and they're bringing that information to your chain. Uh, there were also solutions like atomic swaps, which, as the name suggests, allows you to take one asset on one chain and swap it for another asset on another chain, and to do so in a way uh, that didn't require any third party. The, the entire swap happens, or it doesn't, and this is why it's referred to as atomic. Now, there are many problems with uh, atomic swaps, uh, but one of the biggest ones is that it's not a generally uh, useful uh, piece of technology. It's useful when you want to exchange an asset with someone, and you already know the amount that you want to exchange, and you already know who the counterparty is, uh, and you already have some level of trust that they're going to go through uh, with this exchange. In those conditions, atomic swaps are wonderful, um, if not a little bit slow. But for many of the other applications that you want to build of arbitrary complexity, such as lending platforms, automated market makers, yield aggregators, all of these interesting DeFi primitives that are being built today, atomic swaps just aren't sufficient. Uh, likewise, Oracles provide the capability to get price feeds, which are absolutely critical for things like synthetics uh, and other similar assets like DAI, but that's about as far as they go. They cannot be used to fundamentally introduce interoperability in a trustless and permissionless way. Now, there are, of course, different variants of these technologies and many other options that I, that I haven't talked about, and, and I won't get into them here because we, we just don't have the time. But at the end of the day, they all share a similar set of problems. Either they have a lack of generality, which means they can't be used for any specific use case that you might think of now or in the future, or they have some kind of reliance on a centralized third party. Now, the issue with this is that it just doesn't solve the problem that we were looking to solve with RenVM. So what we did was we put a lot of time and effort into the research and development of a multi-party computation algorithm, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But what this allowed RenVM to do is to accept Bitcoin in a trustless and permissionless way and mint a one-to-one -one representation of that Bitcoin on another chain. Uh, and when you do this, you can use that tokenized representation of Bitcoin that you've created in the same way that you would use any other token. So to give a concrete example, RenVM is able to accept Bitcoin using an MPC algorithm, and it does this today, and mint a one-to-one -one representation of that Bitcoin as an ERC-20 on Ethereum. And you can use that ERC-20 in the same way that you would any other ERC-20. And this allows an incredibly flexible uh, form of interoperability that allows you to capture any use case you might be able to think of today or even in the future. Uh, the addition to this is that you can take this ERC-20 and you can burn it at any point in any amount and get back 
the underlying Bitcoin. And so what you've effectively done is you've created a one-to-one -one backed representation that is redeemable at any time. Uh, and this is how RenVM solves the problem of universal interoperability. Any asset on any chain that uses a SecP 256K1 private key, which is most chains, uh, is able to be supported. And any, uh, any chain, sorry, that is able to uh, implement smart contracts of some form can accept assets uh, and work with them uh, in any way that it can. In May of 2020, we launched RenVM uh, live uh, to mainnet and it's been running seamlessly ever since. So since then, we've done over a billion US dollars in volume. Uh, we've attracted more than 1400 nodes to which we've paid out more than a million US dollars in fees. Uh, and this makes us one of the largest networks that's live today. Uh, and We've uh, been able to do this without a single fault over the last six months, even in the face of uh, data center failures that contain nodes. So we've survived you know, data center failures, we've survived uh, forks, we've survived upgrades of both our own system and of, of other blockchains that we use. Uh, and we've even expanded support to include a variety of new assets and chains. So today, RenVM supports Ethereum, Binance Smart Chain, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Zcash, Digibyte, Dogecoin, Luna, Filecoin, a whole slew of assets. Uh, and as you might have guessed, the reason why I'm talking in Money Dance today is because one of the next chains that we plan to, to support is Avalanche. So what does this actually mean for Avalanche? Well, most obviously, it means that developers building on Avalanche today will have access to Bitcoin and the other assets that RenVM supports. So this means if you're building an automated market maker, if you're building a lending platform, if you're building a yield aggregator, if you're building any of these interesting DeFi printers, or even if you're building something new that's that's never been put on chain before or has never been done before at all, you'll have access to Bitcoin and other assets that you can use as collateral or as liquidity. And this is great uh, for, for many reasons. Uh, the most obvious of which is that A, you get access to a, a large and diverse range of assets uh, with a lot of liquidity, uh, but B, you also get access to a large and diverse range of users that are interested in these different assets that, that you may not have had access to otherwise. And because RenVM also supports Ethereum and Binance, Avalanche also gets access to Ethereum, uh, BNB, ERC20s, and BEP20s as well. Uh, and so you get to hook into all of these established ecosystems that already have users, already have a ton of liquidity, already have adoption, uh, and a lot of this technology that has already been built. So developers on Avalanche don't necessarily have to reinvent the wheel. They can hook into existing uh, DeFi applications and other chains and into the grassroots that have formed there and use that to bootstrap themselves and the Avalanche ecosystem in general. But equally importantly to all of this, the ability to use RenVM for interoperability means that Avalanche can not only access other chains, but it can also be accessed from other chains. This means that the Ethereum ecosystem, uh, DeFi applications like Uniswap, Compound, Aave, MakerDAO, they can access assets that are native to Aave. This includes AaveX, but any other kind of token that might be created there as a part of the Avalanche ecosystem. One of the things that I'm particularly excited for uh, on top of all of this is that for the first time, developers are now able to choose between the different classes of consensus algorithms that they, uh, they want without necessarily having to think about non-technical constraints. So up until now, as a developer, if you're thinking about building the next big DeFi application, before you can necessarily think about the technical constraints, and which chain might be right for you, and which security assumptions are assumptions that you're comfortable making. You have to think about what users are you going to have access to on the chain of your choice, uh, and what assets are going to be there, and is there going to be a way to hook into these other chains? Uh, and if there aren't users and assets on this chain, even if it is the best technical solution, it may not just not be viable from a business perspective. But with an interoperability solution like RenVM, developers can now pick and choose uh, the blockchain that they want, that has the security features that they want, and still access all of the other liquidity, all of the other assets, and all of the other existing technologies and users in the rest of the ecosystem, even if they're not on their own chain. So as a DeFi developer, you can now decide whether you enjoy the security assumptions of the Nakamoto consensus algorithm, of PBFT consensus algorithms, or of course, Avalanche style consensus algorithms. And as I mentioned before, one of the reasons that we're interested in Avalanche is because it really does introduce a fundamentally new style of consensus algorithm. RenVM could choose to support many other different chains uh, as its next step, 
but none of them would introduce a, a, a consensus algorithm that really does make different technical assumptions and different security assumptions uh, in its underlying uh, implementation. And so by introducing Avalanche into the RenVM uh, support, we're able to offer developers uh, just a, a new set of security assumptions that weren't previously available to them. Now, in the last uh, few minutes, uh, I want to just talk about how RenVM is able to achieve all of these uh, things that we've talked about and how it is going to bring assets uh, to Avalanche and how this all works under the hood. So RenVM uses what's called a multi-party computation, which is any computation that is split up amongst multiple parties in such a way that the data that is being worked on or is being generated is not known to any party and can't be known to any subset of those parties that's uh, too small. And what we're able to do with this multi-party computation is actually generate, manage, rotate, and, and sign things with private keys in such a way that these private keys aren't known by anyone. And what this allows us to do is develop a technology that can take custody of funds and move funds around and release funds in such a way that the underlying private keys aren't known and can't even be used unless there is consensus from the entire network. On top of all this, RenVM also includes uh, algorithmic incentive that encourages nodes to behave themselves so that they're fundamentally disincentivized from trying to corrupt the network uh, and potentially steal some of the funds that are in their custody. And we do this by the algorithmic and automated adjustment of fees to ensure that the bond required by RenVM that sort of secures the underlying collateral uh, is sufficiently high that any kind of rational adversary would not try to attack the network because they would only stand to lose funds if they tried to do so. Now, what all of this means concretely is that using this technology and these incentives, RenVM is able to act as a, a sort of custody, sorry, a sort of custodian that is able to accept funds and when it does so, create a tokenized representation that we talked about at the beginning. Uh, now, with this tokenized representation, you can do any of the things that a normal token can do. You can take this token and you can move it between chains, or you can redeem it for the underlying asset, such as Bitcoin. So I'm very excited to see this technology come to Avalanche. And I'm especially excited to see what happens over the months afterwards, where we continue to expand support for new assets uh, and new chains. And as we do that, these new chains and these assets will automatically become available on the Avalanche ecosystem. So I'm very interested to see what this community does with this technology, what kind of interesting and novel applications can be built on Avalanche that can't be built elsewhere, but can still access the liquidity uh, that's available. Uh, and of course, the king of all of cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin itself. Thank you so much for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure to speak here. And it's been an absolute pleasure to work on, on the technology in this space and, and on the Avalanche blockchain specifically. Uh, so until next time.